Before I knew your pastor knew of me, I encountered him on social media and I said, I love this man, supernatural lives. And whenever you mention supernatural, I trigger something in me because that's my assignment is to raise a supernatural army, which I've pursued for 34 years. God called an 18 year old and he trusted him. I remember cover pavilion in Ife. I was praying with a few friends. Actually, we went to cast out a demon. And in the process of casting out demon, we were grateful. Gratitude. He lifted up our hands and said, Thank you, because this lady has been delivered. And Jesus appeared to me, 18 year old, and said, Raise me a supernatural army. Like, what are you talking about? Me? He told me that day, he said, From today, all the night gifts of the spirit will function in your life. People, in my fellowship people could not understand. It was too strange. It's very people that knew me before. What just happened? I had to leave the fellowship I was part of, ECU then. You know, start kings or later on. But you know, it, I did not know what led to that encounter until nine days ago. Was it nine days ago? Two weeks ago, two weeks ago. Maybe about 15, about 15 days ago. We had the first meeting in Akure. And for years now, for well over 10 years, anytime I go to Akure, I will always make, I will, I will always, I will always make sure I see my uncle, who is 91 year old now. Just honor him, no matter how busy my schedule is. In fact, I prefer to see him before I go to minister. But this time around, because we came in late, and you know, I couldn't see him before the meeting. So immediately after the meeting, before we left, went to see him and he was always grateful i just noticed even there are things i won't do my for my father i would do for that man at times there was a time i went to the house i didn't like the state of the house i called the children what's going on this house cannot be like this dropped millions of naira let's fix it and they were so grateful but this time around after i did the normal thing gave him money gave the grandchildren money as i was driving back as we we're driving back to Lagos, the Spirit of the Lord asked me, he said, when did your aunt die? That's the man's wife. I said, I know it's 1990. That's all I knew. So I picked up the phone and I called his daughter who lives in France. When did your mom die? He said, August 7th, 1990. And the Lord whispered to my ears. He said, the assignment she did not finish. That's what Jesus came to appear to you and said. And it, it began to make sense. Because that woman was the most prominent person, although she married into her family. She was the most prominent person in her family. In fact, most people that knew us knew us because of her. The Lord said, said Can't you see? That's what you became. I said, Chai. A 18 year old found mercy. You know, there's a song I've sang over and over. You know, there is a mercy that speaks. Please don't mind my Yoruba speaking, no. Anurelu sorrow it's not me, it's your mercy that is speaking, not my might. Ah, no, 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 You know, that humbled me. It took my humility to another level because there's nothing we have that we did not receive. Supernatural Life Center is a product of mercy. Thank God for the people in his life, people like Muiwa. Muiwa is one of my mentees. I minister at Institution of Lights multiple times. Amazing man. Great teacher. 
of the world. Thank God for the people he puts in your space. Because some other people, what they wanted to do, or what they should have done, the right people in their space talk them out of it. Be smart. Do you want to beg like other pastors? You are a lawyer. Build your career to a point. There are seasons. Once you, when you, once you miss your season, what should be easy becomes difficult. Do you know when an 18 year gets pregnant? It's so easy. In fact, he can be pregnant for four months and not be aware. But get a 44 year old woman pregnant. <sighs> because the season has almost passed. There's nothing like striking the iron at the right time. I pray for somebody under the sound of my voice. You will not miss your season. But you know the beautiful thing? There is a God that can restore. Pastor Philip, your Bible calls Obaton Yigba Bada. Obaton Soigba Bada. Everyone under the sound of my voice who has missed this time, he who has missed this season, I declare by the mercy of God, you will experience a restoration. He said, I will restore the years the locusts are sitting, the caterpillar and the canker worm. You missed that woman you should have married. You missed that man you should have married. I stand in the authority of Jesus this morning. And I call forth your restoration. You know, that's the story of my team. I met this man for the first time in January. He was so excited to meet me. Good man. Came to see me when I went to minister in Dallas. I've always wanted to meet you. I mean, as a prophet, you should be prophesying over him now. But as I saw him, I saw him. And I've never seen him before. Of course, I have an idea they work together. But every word that God gave me that day, nothing for him. Everything for him. And I kept on saying, Gabriel, Gabriel has missed this season. But there's a, there's a small window. There's a small window. He must not miss it. Good man. Some other people would have gotten offended. Yes, uh -uh. It's my life. Professor over me, not over someone else. <laughs> but you know what he did in the middle of the conversation? He said, sir, so that we will not waste time. Can I go and bring Gabriel? <laughs> Listen, some of you, the reason why you are not fulfilling your prophecy is because until you interpret someone else's dream, your dream will not be interpreted. Joseph did not go into the palace to interpret his dream. Oh, he was there to interpret the, the king's dream. But in the interpretation, in the interpreting the king's dream, his own dream became a reality. What about me? Shata Bara Lakota here said. So he brought Pastor Gabriel the following day. He said, I've brought him home. Since this, the word is about him, it's not about me. He even excused us. So it was just both of us in the room, in my hotel suite. I said, Pastor Gabriel, I didn't know you from Adam, but can I be real with you? The Lord told me, you are out of alignment. He said, you are off. And he told me, there's a small window which you must not miss. He said, if you miss this window, I, don't, I can't guarantee anything after that. He says, anything. Teachable. Humble. He said, anything, sir. Anything, sir. I said, first of all, you are in a group now. That group will ruin you. Come out now. He said, you are supposed to be operating in a particular office, but you are operating in a different office. Your, the office that is not yours. It's like you move into an office which is not meant for you. I said, exit now. I said, ah, no problem, sir. That was Saturday. By Monday, he called me. He said, sir, I've exited what was a group. That fast. He said, yes, so I've left. Sense. Spiritual sense. 
So I said, no problem, no problem. And it's a big WhatsApp group. It's not a, it's a big one, influential one. I said, out. But the another, another word God gave me that day when he came to see me was, the Lord told me, he said, because one of the anointing upon my life is to launch people. Yes, sir. I remember I met Foy yes, two years ago. He came to my house in Lagos. He said, sir, I've never seen him before in my life. He said, I came and I came humbly. I know I should have gone far than this, but something is missing. He said, can I be your son? Can I submit? Like, okay. And he bear witness in my spirit. He said, okay, let's see what we can do. And anytime I see him all around now, I said, that's my boy. That's my boy. That's my boy. I've seen that. I don't even understand how we... I met Moses Sako in the Philippines 10 years ago. So I just noticed that about three years ago when I was coming to Nigeria, I saw that he's posting from Abuja. So I said, I said where are you, Moses? He said, I just moved to Abuja. But sir, it's not easy. I said, okay, no worry. The Lord puts on my heart. He said, when you go to Nigeria, send for him to come and stay in your house and follow you to everywhere you go. And he followed me everywhere. I said, Poop, go. The rest is history. Hallelujah. I've seen it. I've seen it. Is it with Sumiso Lag, baby? I've seen it severally. I don't even understand how it works. The Lord told me, He said, I've called you to raise kings. Today, I speak as a prophet of God. Iyanu lo rukore Iyanu lo rukore Iyanu aye Please, I'm very sorry you're holding on your reverse speaking. I'm too shy than this. I'm too shy. But God has been messing me up in the last few weeks. You know, Pastor Philip, he spoke to me a few weeks ago. He said, son, there's a source to this anointing. He said, go back to that source. The strangest thing started speaking to me in Yoruba. I said, ah. He said, there's an ancient well that I need you to focus on. He said, your prophetic anointing is tied to it. And he spoke to me this morning. He said, do you know there, was some, there are some levels of the miraculous that were released through Babalola in the 40s and 50s that the church is not yet back in it. They have touched some of the surface. They will walk into a city and the whole city will gather. No billboard. Ibadan, the biggest city in Nigeria. The king became one of his pastors. The Oba of Ibadan, Lubadan then, was a pastor of CAC. That's how come you go every street in Ibadan, there's a CAC church. So I said, the, the other part of the instruction, I said, Pastor Gabriel, the Lord told me, launch, re. In his own case, it's not launch. Most of the ones I've done is launch. This one is relaunch. And I was very clear. I said, relaunch. That's what the Lord told me. Relaunch. There are businesses that will be relaunched this morning. Amen. There are ministry gifts that will be relaunched this morning. He said, relaunch. Yes. I said, really? So I told him, I said, we are relaunching you. And it's going to be in Chicago. Very clear instruction. So he said, yes, sir, we'll do that too. But concerning that one, the devil fought it all. We fixed the day we were planning. Then two months about it, before it, I got a call from him. From the tone of the voice, I know it's like, eh. I picked it up. I said, ah, Pastor Gabriel, this conversation is not holding. Pack your bags. Fly to Chicago. We will hold that program. Yes. When God speaks, we don't okay. analyze. We do it. I don't know who I'm talking to. God has been speaking to you. 
You are trying to use sense to balance God. You didn't hear me. You are using sense to balance God. You are using sense. Eh? But now, don't anything he tells you to do, just do it. So I said, Pastor Gabriel, this conversation will not hold. Get on, this, on, the, on the flight to Chicago on that day, and I want to see you there. So he came. He flew to Chicago. So we had Emmanuel live in Chicago. Not so many people. Less than 200. In the middle of it, the Lord spoke to me. He said, grab the microphone and announce to people. Everybody that is part of this live concert will one day be telling his friend, didn't you see me there? I was there. Because this video, we go all over the world. And somewhere in the video, in the, in the concert, he just said, Ha, ah, hey, this kind God. Listen, and just God just sat on it. I declare as a prophet of God, where your case is concerned, I see God sitting on me. Saturn. I saw it too. I call, I call Henry. Henry, what happened? He said, We two, we are seeing it. Oh. And they can't climb me. Climb me. Climb me. Climb me. By the way, not one dime was spent to promote. Zero promotion. Zero promotion. Zero promotion. Zero promotion. I was part of the My Daddy, My Daddy production. I fixed it. Stream is all I remember after we were going to release, I called me. He said to me, let's promote you. I love her for that. She's very sensitive. He said, Daddy, don't let us. So I said, okay, oh, we are the one that did it. Oh. I was going to pay for it. He said, don't let us. Let's leave it. My daddy, my daddy was not promoted. Though. I went to preach in an Hispanic church. And they knew my daddy, my daddy. Your baby is singing. I will be singing and dancing and, and chanting to the rest of eternity. Ooh. You know when God sits on a project. And you know the funniest thing? This was exactly one year after my daddy, my daddy. Yeah. So God say I want to launch another project but I came on the 13th of October because it's your time oh it's actually one year it's actually I forgot it I've, it's another I heard the Lord say it's another launching season Never took it and blew it, and it went everywhere. His fame went abroad. That's the way your business idea is going to go abroad. People will become interested in your idea. God will speak to people about your idea. He will raise supporters for your idea. Jesus. Jesus. I still remember during the pandemic when Dusin was sharing the, 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 the vision of upper room with me. Say. So to the glory of God, I've mentored Dunsi for six plus years now. Number of productions, I will even be the one to pay for my demastering. I'll pay, so don't worry, pay me later. Some, some, some will pay back, some will write it off. Remember, when early days of pandemic, I called, I called Dunsi, I said, Dunsi, there sounds that needs to come out now. God told me. He said, yes, I know. So I said, Let, let's start releasing it. And that's why during pandemic, we are pushing it out. 
There was a sense of urgency. We were pushing it out. We were pushing it out. I saw it live. I remember I was ministering one day and I saw a stadium. We were ministering together in Abuja. This was like 2019. I said, I see stadium. I see stadium. I see stadium. And these days when we talk, we say, see what the Lord has done. See, See what, what the Lord, the Lord has, has done. done. What we waited for has come to pass. See what the Lord has done. Listen, the rest is history. I can't even claim credit for where. Any less she, any less she, aye, aye, Allah. Any less she, oh. It means you did this. The one that did for Gabriel, that did for Harry's soul. The one that did for Foy, I come to announce to you where your case is concerned. He will do it. He will not He will not say he will you know, some of the things that people credit me for. So that man is smart. Wow, look at the way he started the new. He just he came in the place of rebuke. I was not that smart. And those are very smart people. Your pastor is a lawyer, is very smart. Some of us. God that is carrying also. You know, there are two kinds of people. People that God is carrying. And people that are carrying God. I'm not that smart though. When people are in fact, I still got a message. I showed them. One of my friends, he said, I've watched all your meetings since you've been in the country. How do you do it? You don't live here. And you pack auditorium everywhere. I, said, uh, I can't reply you. Because God taught me a long, a long time ago, he said, if I do it by mercy, and you start giving seminar, and giving tips, just tell them, I did it. Some people have taken offense. It's like, you're not telling us everything. Just tell us. It's not, I'm not being smart. I will tell you, you might call it strategy, but me for me, oh, it's not a strategy. It was a rebuke. Koboko. He was rebuking me. Let me tell you the story of religion if you have never heard before. I hope I'm not boring you. <laughs> After doing ministry for 20 years, officially, you know, I was called 1990. I was ordained 1997 on my birthday, 26th birthday. That was when I was ordained, and the ministry was inaugurated. We started a church. So, 2017 makes what 20 years that we've been operating and something strange happened i went to a naming ceremony very strange naming ceremony pastor philip you know one of those people not his son of america he lived in america for 40 years they're no longer in touch with culture but they still want to brag we understand culture after three weeks of giving back home he said pastor i think we should name the baby three weeks <laughs> So let's do naming ceremony. <laughs> no, of course, you can't bring a baby out of America hospital without they have given him, but the naming ceremony, the way we do it here, say, let this name the baby. I was laughing inside. Say, after 21 days, that's when he don't know you that we need to do the culture. Let's name. I said, okay. So he fixed the naming ceremony. Normally, I would not do it. I have pastors that do it. But the man is a good man. I knew how God changed his story. He came into church broken. His wife had left him. He found his wife in church. A new wife. They got married, Puerto Rican. You know, and God has blessed him. Presently, the person that was barely living 
when he came to church, asked over a thousand clients. In fact, concerning this trip, he just come and said, Pastor, are you going to Nigeria? He said, I'm going. He said, what can we do? We should do something. He said, anything. So he sent me 25 million naira. He just said, Pastor, manage this. I'm not going to love to manage things like that. <laughs> so he sent me 25 million naira to manage. So I said, okay, we will manage it. <laughs> then we we'll manage it. So, good man. That's just the kind of person he is. So I said, let me honor this good man. He's in his 60s. But if, if you see me rebuke him, you will think he was born yesterday. Smart man. I said, stop that nonsense. Everything. You drop it up. I said, this man is good. Let me honor him. He's even older than me. Let me honor him. Although he doesn't understand culture. So I showed up. I'm, I, it's not as if I don't know what to preach. But God said, share it. So I sat down. And as I sat down, they said, they called me after a while. They said, come and share God's word in the Nebi ceremony. So I thought, maybe 10, 15 minutes at most. And I went back to sit. All of a sudden, there's this African-American woman, Shalita by name. So Shalita stood and walked across the room. I declare in this season, whosoever has been appointed to be involved in your upliftment, regardless of how much effort that person needs to make, the person will be under compulsion to make it. In fact, when I got to know Shalita much better, I realized Shalita is reserved. But that day, Shalita became an astral introvert. It's like something was biting her. So she stood up. She walked across the room and came to where I was sitting. He said, Pastor, I was born in, in a plus pastor's house. My dad is a pastor. My grandfather is a pastor. But I've never been displaced all my life. Ah, uh, what did I share? When is your time? You will do ordinary, but it will look extraordinary. Because as I was gonna, what did I say? What did I say? So I said, Okay, God bless you. Thank you for the compliment, although it was strange. Then 10 minutes after, she stood up again. I said, Sir, 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 I'm sorry, I'm not normally like this. I said, What's going on? He said, The Lord just spoke to me that my grandfather's property which is a street. It's yours. It's almost a street. 15 minutes from downtown Chicago. So it's for your church. So I said, okay, oh. Where we came from, you don't sell your grandfather's property now. <laughs> Abi, it's your inheritance now. But he said the Lord told him, okay, about So that evening, my wife and I went to see the... This, this, I call it a street. It's not full street, but it's like three-quarter of a street. And there's still another building on the other street. So by the time I put it together, I just call it a street. And so I tell people, I said, especially... All this nonsense flying around eh, because you are Christocentric, you don't so see it. That's not Christocentric. That's Christocentric eccentric. What did I call it? Christ eccentric. There was a reason why God gave the, the, that revelation to our robot and it transformed the body of Christ. And I want us to take us back because of your disgrace. It's not grace, it's disgrace. The people that God raised their volume to teach grace, they don't teach that. The two principal voices where teaching of grace is concerned, Joseph Priest and Andrew Womack, they are not anti tight So where, where did you get your own disgrace from? You analyze some of the messages. It's like psychiatric evaluation. Psychiatric evaluation. Somebody is losing his mind. Or it's like somebody did not use his drug before going to church. And now he's talking mess. What's spirit of error? 
To the glory of God, I can't remember the last time I gave tithe. I do multiples. But that doesn't mean I will cancel God's system. The system was given to us to establish a consistency in giving. I'm not saying, you know, you don't have to give. Jesus gave you everything, just take it. Now, <laughs> the taking involves giving. In fact, giving is the posture of receiving. That's why it's more blessed to give than to receive. <laughs> so when you give, it's because you know how to receive. <laughs> so please, no, they are eccentric people. Don't follow eccentrics. They need help. The reason you will see some of them is mental health. So, Look back to the original story. I just need to drop that. Now, if I tell my church people, I say, please, we're not having that conversation. If you don't want to give, go. I will beg you to give. If you understand, if you have worked with God. God tested Abraham. How? He said, lay down your only son. It, and Abraham lived grace. It was grace. There was no law then. The giving of Isaac was the platform for the receiving of Jesus. Please sit, 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 sit. Sorry, you have stood for 20 something minutes. I'm very, very sorry. I'm a nice man, though. <laughs> Can you appreciate your wonderful pastor and his dear wife? I love them. I love them. I've adopted this church in Abuja already. I've adopted. I'm serious. I've adopted you. If you know the battle we fought to be here today, you will know. Shows I've really adopted you. One of my big friends in the city sent me a message. I love you. I said, ah, don't touch it. That's on the money. Don't touch it. We'll see later. <laughs> but this one, we are coming here. We made up our mind to be here. We had options, but we said it has to be here. So, are you following me? So we saw it and like, my God, massive property. So he said, okay, we set up a meeting with the grandfather, which he did set up, she did set up. And the grandfather and the, you know, the whole clan came around with a few of my leaders. So like, okay, your granddaughter prophesied is our property what's going on the hands everybody say yes we believe so too he has told she has told us but the man kept quiet the grandfather who was 86 years old and i understand perfectly why he was quiet he has pastored in that building for 40 years the church was the biggest church in the community they had a school if a good number of the people in the community went to that school so part of what we inherited was the school the school, everything. And now, it's beginning to look like they were struggling. And they felt like, we can manage this property again. again. So everybody felt like, yes, this man is the right man. But the man kept quiet. But I didn't force. I just, I told, in fact, I told them, leave the man. In fact, the granddaughter, go mad. He embarrassed us. We have had conversation with him. And he said, it's okay to bring you. I said, it's okay. I said, Shalita. Did I come to you that was looking for a building? We are not homeless. We have a church which is doing well. And we are even thinking of expanding on the same street. So it's okay. Of course, we know we need to expand, but we're not desperate. Leave your grandfather alone. Rest. Rest. So I calmed that down. So about a year after that, a, a phone call came in. Hello? Is this Dr. K? So, yes, this is Dr. K. This is Reverend Murphy. I'm like, ah, Murphy, Murphy, who is Murphy? After a while, I say, yeah, yes, 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 the man we saw last year. So he said, can I see you? I'm like, why? He said, the Lord told me. Now my property is yours. I said, okay. 
You were quiet last year. Now you are calling. He said, the Lord told you. So I dropped the phone. I called Shalita. Shalita, your grandfather just called me. He said, yeah, I know about it. He called me. He said, can you call Pastor Kay? I said, nah, nah, nah. You call him. He came last year. You embarrassed us all. Mm -mm. Grandpa, this is his number. If you're really serious, call him. He said, that's why he called you. I said, yeah. So he's real. He said, it's real. So we had another meeting. But this time around, he was the one championing it. Okay. We need to finalize this thing soon. And I'm like, how much do you want to take? They said, tell us how much you want to pay. So I went to pray. And God gave me a number that does not make sense. Even one house on that street costs more. For example, they are selling a house in front of our streets now. That house is 700000 One house. And I said, the Lord told me 540 for the streets. And they said, yes, yes, we will do 540. And we fixed the closing date. The man said, no, 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 you don't need a realtor. You don't need a lawyer. Let's just do it, gentleman. It was like something was chasing him. And they fixed the closing, and the man went into coma. So we closed. He was still in coma. Somebody represented him. And after we closed, he went to heaven. And the Lord told me, he said, I've just handed over a baton to you for that neighborhood. So I was not surprised when the children called me and said, Pastor K, won't you mind if we do the funeral in your church? I said, why not? Will you be kind enough to officiate? I said, why not? Even the place they went to, I was the one that went to open it. They got a smaller facility. And they said, will you be kind enough to be the one to open it up? I said, why not? And they said, you know, there are a lot of, they said, we have a tradition in the family. All the grandchildren, all the, all the children, they go married in this church. Can we come back? I said, why not? Why not? At no cost. So it was while I was thanking God for this street after we closed that the Lord said do you know they lost this facility to you because they lost a generation so 40 years ago they were the biggest in the neighborhood they were on TV, they were on radio they had a school, everything was working and they got so much into their generation that they forgot there was a generation coming so 40 years after there was no generation to take over he said, I had to bring somebody from Africa to take the party. And he said, you have been doing ministry for 20 years. He said, in fact, I gave you this to tell you I'm with you. But if you don't want to turn apostles into choir members and prophets into ushers, go back to where you started and start a new movement. He said, separate it from the existing structure. Give them direct access to you. And in that vision, I saw Shola. He said, it's the apostle that will lead the movement. And he told me, he said, I will make him what to Naraku. I will make him to you what to Naraku. What's the pastor at He said, he will interpret the vision I gave you to a generation perfectly he said you will not be able to interpret it but you will interpret it he said but cover him don't control him he said there are things there are strategies I will give him that you will not understand he said just because you don't understand does not make it wrong he said you don't need to know everything I will tell you what you need to know if I, you need to put him in check I will let you know he said give them feathers to fly don't control them cover them so I called Shola. He thought it was a small fellowship thing, so he was excited. So it was on the day of ordination that I realized that, ah, this thing is big. Because as of that time, he was leading a dance group, choreography. Those of you that went to Ife, he had this group called The Word. He was a dancer who has never had any pastoral responsibility. He was not even the head of department in church. But God said, he's the man for the job. When he sees in that God 
We look at people that don't look like it. They are the youngest in the house. Even the prophet would have assumed it has to be Eliab. But we say, no, he's the youngest. The illegitimate child. You know, that was why he was not brought to the table. Because he is a son from Saichik. So the legal sons were lined up. But God said, none of them. He's the one that is despised. The product of a relationship that should not have been. That's the one I will put oil on. Grace focuses on what is despised. Eliab said, oh, the only one that is not here is the youngest. Samuel said, then bring him. As he was coming, God said, that's the one. So God said, he's the boy, the dancer. That's the one I will use. The boy who has vowed never to pastor in his life. That was why he came to my office the day I was supposed to do a nation. I said, sir, can we not do this? I closed my assessor. My eyes are closed. By opening it and you are still in this room, anything that happened, I'm not responsible for it. He got the message, he ran out. The boy that walked into our church at age 13 is sleepers. One of our branches in Alagbado. He said, that's the apostle for the movement. He said, elevate him. Don't put him under the existing structure. Give him a new access. It's a new fountain. He must not be corrupted. That you are the apostolic oversight, but don't put it in King's World system. Give them their system. Clear instruction. Now, the clear instruction now looks like, oh, you are smart. You have strategy. I was being whooped and I was being given instruction. The only thing I did right was I followed the instruction. And look at my life. Aye me, bola fuo, Jesus. Emi me, fogo fuo, Jesus. One more time. Aye me, bola fuo, Jesus. Emi me. Obatoni mi to me me to me me to me me Obatoni mi to me to me Obatoni mi to me to me me Eke Yesu sabokata ya Balakota sata ba ya 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 Emi mi fuku fu You know I left the shores of this nation it's going to be 25 years in November My peers in ministry ask me all the time what is going on you don't live here Your influence is even bigger than us that live here how come? I'm not a strategist, though. I just follow him. Instruction. 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 Even the way I make money is instruction. No? Instruction. 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 My PA, who follows me around the nations, the blessed man, he has four companies as a CEO. He sells cars, he repairs cars. What's it all no? Sells cars, repairs cars, and he rents car. But the same person walked into our church less than five years ago, and the Lord told me, give him a car, because he did not have a car. And I gave him a car. And pandemic broke. Everybody was shut down. 
So smart boy, he will come to my house. And the Lord told me, he said, expand his mind. Because he grew up in Ife. He was born and raised in Ife. Ife town. Lagere. Those of you that know Ife, Lagere, Sabo, Mafia. <laughs> so he was living in America, but his mind was still conditioned for Mafia. Lagere. Agree, my God bless. So he will come around. And the Lord was doing some strange things. And by the way, I do a few business here and there. Because God breathes on it. So some of the deals will just come in and it will be around me in the office. And I will say, Oh, DJ, somebody just paid in 35,000. I say, Ah, 35,000. I say, Long value. He said, Daddy, I don't make 35,000 a year. I say, It's just only now. Maybe you came from Nigeria. You write it 7 million naira only. I say, I say, Only. Shut up. And for about a year. I was redressing his mind. Everyone under the sound of my voice whose mind is conflicting with his prophecy, I declare this morning receive an upgrade. You know, your mind is like that thermostat that regulates the air condition. You know, the air condition system can be working perfectly and yet will not feel the effect because somebody set the thermostat wrongly. Your spirit has capacity. That's why your prophecy is. Seen. But guess what? Your mind can regulate it. Your mind can give it expression or shut it down. I speak as a prophet of God. Everyone under the sound of my voice whose mind has not allowed his prophecy to become. I declare this morning be released. Literally, during the pandemic, I pulled his mind off. He's a very smart guy. He made first class in Bangkok. So the brain is there. But that thinking level was like a level. Pull the shatter like a broke Sabo. Finish me fear. By the time I was done with him, I turned to him one day. I said, Did you go and resign your job? Ah, that was a tough instruction. To the glory of God, the wife just got pregnant for the first time after 10 years then. 10 years of waiting, which is a testimony by itself. He it was the first, first uh, the, himself and his wife were the first set of couple I will find in my life who had done IVF in four continents. Before, they've done it in Nigeria, they did it in England, they did it in Taiwan. And they now did the one in Chicago. So we felt like, ah, this is America now. Only for me to get a call on the day they were supposed to get results and the tone was low. DJ, what's going on? He said, Sir, it did, not, it did not work. Okay, don't be distracted. So I was so broken as a pastor because that's what we do. We carry people. We love them. Their pain is our pain. He said, give me the address where you are. I'm coming. He said, sir, no. You will come. I said, ah. So he refused to give me the address. So I was stranded. So I had to wait for him. After 30 minutes, himself and his wife, they pulled in front of my house with the car he gave them, the small car which was their only car then. So I met them at the door. I was so broken. So I put my hands around the wife for me. I did not even know I was prophesying Pastor Philip. I said, devil, for this you do, for this one you did, we will retaliate. We will, we will retaliate with double. And right there, I named the two children. I said, a boy and a girl. And I released her. Exactly one year after, I named Otito and Ododo. Now, while they were carrying Otito and Ododo, I now turned to him. I said, Deji! God told me to tell you, resign your job. That's not your next level. She was, he was scared in his head. But because he trusted the word of his prophet, he said, ah, Dr. Kenny, I know if he says it, that means he saw it. So he resigned. And from there, he was started opening up first company, second company, third company, fourth company. He's only spent five years in America. And the person that did not have a car 
flies a plane today. Flies plane. Because we are working on a little project. I won't say more than that. God told him, he said, go and learn how to fly. Because you're going to fly me all over the world. Can you imagine as busy as he is with multiple companies? Mission first. And as busy as I am. And you know I'm very busy. Anytime I'm coming, he gives instructions. That you are not coming for the next three weeks. I'm going to the first assignment. You know, I'm a pharmacist by trading. But he told me, drop pharmacy. I have better plans. I trusted him. All ministry. I thought I would never do anything outside ministry. But he shocked me about seven years ago. He said, there's a fountain in you. The same way I've anointed you to raise a supernatural army, to preach and teach and prophesy. He said, I've anointed you to make money. So he opened, started opening fountains. So, I have a media company now. In fact, that product, AdMac, and me, I'm the CEO. We are friends. We still talked two days ago. And Daniel, Daniel is my friend. Because it, make, it makes for me. All this, everything you have in this place. And my company manufactures it. They manufacture. Right. A good number of the mega churches in this country is my product they are using. As busy as I am, oh, me, oh, more business, I don't know how to do business. Oh. I don't call Google for learning. Oh, Google for learning. <laughs> A mere lesson. Lo wagbo go for lemi. I'm a mystery. I don't understand myself. If I, every time I ask God, I say, "What else do you want to tell me that I don't know about me?" I'm a child in His presence. Anything he tells me, let's do it. So people that are looking for strategy, they have been disappointed several times because I have no tips to share. Some of them think I'm keeping things away from them. No, it's the supernatural. He reveals it. I follow. Just follow, follow. And look at where follow, follow has brought me to. I remember the first time I preached in India. So the glory of God... I'm one of the most traveled preachers in this country. Do I live in this country? Why am I even saying this country? Yes, I'm the son of the shore. So I'm, I mean, I, I've, I've been to a few places. From Holland to France to Ireland to Luxembourg to Swaziland to Switzerland to Estonia to Brunei to Philippines to Malaysia Philippines Japan India, China. In me. The first time I entered a plane was when the plane took me to America. I didn't go to Lagos until I was in part four in Ife. Ibadan, Paraku, Badan Boys High School, Badan Grammar School. All my story, CV, Ibadan, Ibadan, Ibadan. In fact, when I went to Lagos, I was a missionary in Lagos. Because I did. They had to take me around because I didn't know anywhere in Lagos. And I only did ministry in Lagos for less than two years. When people now say, ah, it was strategic, strategic, in it. In fact, the way I left Nigeria was one of the most, is one of the strangest thing. November 1st, 1999, I was preaching for a friend, Solomo Jigiri, in the Jeshatedu. His convention. As I was about to climb the pulpit, the Lord spoke to me. He said, announced to everybody in that meeting that this marks the end of this phase of your ministry in Nigeria. I said, ah, ah. 
on someone else's pulpit. He said, say it. No visa, nothing. Of course, my wife was working on the process, but nothing has come out. By November 18, I was in San Francisco. I'm strange, oh. You know, a few months into church, I was practicing pharmacy and, you know, doing church. I preach a message on wisdom. You know, one of those messages that your church member will stand up and clap for you. I told them, I'm a very wise man. And that's why when God told me to go to Lagos, I first of all looked for a job that will carry God in Lagos. A small pharmacy job, and I started church. I said, that's why I'm not under pressure financially. Because I'm well cared for. I can use all the money that comes from ministry to do ministry. I don't need to be cared for. Ah, people say, hey, hey, he's the kind of pastor we like. And I preach my rubbish message. Sunday morning, Tuesday. As the choir, as, as a worship leader was finishing the worship for me to take over, to start teaching, midweek service. The Lord spoke to me as I stood up. He said, with the same mouth, you told everybody on Sunday that you have been supporting me. Now go and use that mouth to tell them I just banned you from pharmacy. He banned me. Like Pogba. <laughs> At least Pogba is by me. I, I could not get back. I was banned for life. You know, when I was preaching it on Sunday, I preached it with fire. Now this time, I, it was a lamp. I said, I said, people of God, the Lord just told me. He has banished and banned me from pharmacy. So I had to go to my boss the following day and resign. He was angry, so he held on to my money. So I didn't give him enough notice. I'm like, my boss said I should resign. You are now, take your, your, your money away. And now he now say, you will do all this. How much time do I even spend on it? Please don't follow my business but I know that's not the way to do business. I can teach you how not to do business using my life. <laughs> As my PA, we get most contracts when I'm on mission. That's why people will not start disturbing with money. We want to do it. 100000 Want to do it. $70,000. Ah, do Romo on mission. Say, hey, can you send one of your boys away? I said, you focus on my assignment and I will take care of you. That's the story of my life. I thought I would preach a message to you. Apparently God sent me to SLC to just tell somebody you can trust yeah. the one that is managing yes. you. Yes. He yes. will never mismanage you. You don't have to be smart. You only need to be connected to a smart God. There's something bigger than AI. It's called spiritual intelligence. Yes, sir. If you get that one right, every other thing will be fine. I hope I've been able to encourage somebody with my story. This is my story. This is my song. Oh, oh, oh. praising my Savior all that day long. 